is Pastor Susan, and welcome to a new day of devotions as we are forming our faith every day and engaging scripture, going through a journey of pivoting into God's will and way as we are moving from brokenness to wholeness in Jesus' name. And today we are hearing a very, very um, impactful and maybe perhaps a little difficult reading that we find in John's Gospel, chapter 2, um, as Jesus is confronting a practice that is, um, is upsetting to him, but also is speaking to us about our relationship. Uh, not only with worship in the temple and in church, but also our lives as we relate to money. And uh, this passage of scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. Listen to these words. In the temple, Jesus found, himself, found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He said, he told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. All right, I want to give you a little bit of background on this story. Uh, I don't write this in the devotional, but as I was reading it, I was thinking about um, the importance of this. So um, in the Jerusalem temple in the first century, um, a lot of activity surrounded the offering uh, of sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. And, um, and for offering God uh, a portion of the people's livelihoods so that um, not just to please God, but so that the temple um, could function. And this is a, con a continued practice as we think about offering our tithes and our offerings to God uh, through steward our stewardship. But um, in the temple, it was a little bit different because remember, uh, during the first century, Rome was in charge. Roman coin, coinage was used with the image of Caesar on it. That would profane, profane the um, temple offering. And so there were money changers that were there that would swap out. Um, that they didn't use um, currency, the Roman currency, for their offerings in the temple. That would have profaned the temple as well, right? So um, so they would bring doves and cattle and sheep, uh, depending on the uh, level of, uh, of status um, and wealth uh, would determine the kind of offering that was brought. Um, and the money changers would uh, give the temple, the temple money um, for the use of this. So anyway, Jesus is confronting the money changers because part of what was being done was there was a tax and that tax went to um, not just the maintenance of the temple but to the pocketbooks of those religious leaders who were in charge. And Jesus saw the hypocrisy in that and so he is confronting that. Um, but I want to encourage us to think about our relationship with money. And imagine, if you will, what it would look like if money was not connected in any way with greed of any kind. It was used for the sake of trade, you know, so you could buy your groceries, buy, pay for your lodging, et cetera, et cetera, and encourage creative work for the common good. What would it be like if money was for community good, for creative ways in which we are impacting community. Um, we would not try to um, be concerned about gambling, for example, or taking a risk in the stock market. Um, we wouldn't see the tremendous disparity between the ultra-rich and, and those in, stuck in poverty. Uh, we would not see the fleecing of customers 
um, or the preying on the most valuable through sky-high interest rates that come through credit cards. Um, we would notice less, co less uh, competition and more cooperation and collaboration between people and groups. Um, we would be generous in our giving and sharing of information. We would invest our resources so that others might have opportunities to have better lives and a more sustainable planet. So as we read Jesus's actions in this chapter of John as just purely criticism of the money changers who were profaning uh, the sacred space, Tom Muldoon suggests there's another way to understand this action. The world is God's house, and every misuse of money is a violation of God's command to love our neighbors as ourselves. In this respect, money is no different from any of the other tools that people use, except perhaps in the frequencies with which we use it. Jesus' criticism points to the ways people tend to act differently in the sacred space, in the temple, or in the church, which ought to mirror life from God's kingdom from the places that are outside of the temple. Many are tempted to use money not for the sakes of building up of the kingdom, but to become, in the words of St. Augustine, turned inward on ourselves. So today, I would invite us to take a look at how we are using money outside of the temple. Not discouraging you from giving to uh, the work and the ministry and mission of Lawrence Christian Church, but think about how do I spend the 90%? If you are a tither, how am I spending the 90% that's left? Am I doing it in ways that are building up others or am I only concerned for myself? Let's think about how we steward our lives in ways that are magnifying God's work in the world. So let's think about that and pivot as a pivot point from brokenness to whole. Let's realize that how we steward the, the income and the resources that God has given us matter. Let's do it for the glory of God. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm.